Good morning, sir. Miss Cone asks for help. Something's wrong with the projector. It's not working or something. I'm coming. Well, I don't know what could have happened. It was working yesterday. Maybe some virus or something. Oh, it works. There was an error in the code, but I've fixed it. It should be fine now. Great, class. Let's thank him. I hope she likes it. Honey, I'm back, oh boy. Steven, why so early? Who is? Who's that guy? James, wait, Steven? Steven, hey, look at me. I watched a documentary about couples yesterday, and the expert lady said that spicing up your relationship with occasional drama tightens the bonds. Yeah, wanna know what it's like? Baby, show me what it's like. I don't really got no tights. I just wanna fuck all night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Baby, I need to know. Mm -hmm. I just been fantasizing, and we got a lot of time. Baby, come throw the pipe. Gotta know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Your size, act subtractified. Daddy, don't throw no curves. Hold up, I'm going wide. We could just start at 10, then we could go to 5. I don't play with my pen. I mean, what I write. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How's it going, everybody? I hope you're having a great day or a great night. Today, we're going to be talking about cuckolding. Now, this may be a topic you were not expecting, but I think because the word cuck gets thrown around so often, Sometimes in the political field, but I hear it more and just talking about a weak man or anything like that. So today we're going to educate ourselves and ask some of these questions. Does your girlfriend having an OnlyFans make you a cuck? Does watching the adult entertainment industry make you a cuck? Is it selfish not to let your woman be satisfied by someone else if you're not able to satisfy her? In a way, does being a cuck actually make your relationship better? These are the questions that we're going to answer today. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. As I'm sure you've already figured out, there's just this really wide spectrum of different practices within cuckolding. Yeah. And I think that and then there's new terms and stuff that have come about in the last four years. Like so many um, terms, right? Stag, vixen, hot wife and all like all of this stuff. And you're like, wait, what? Like, what is all this? And how do you define the differences and everything like that? For me, I, I, I feel like it's just like one big cuckold umbrella, cuckolding uh -huh. umbrella. And then you've got different kind of dynamics within that. And some people really enjoy that kind of teasing part of it because it, wow. it, it is kind of unfair it seems uh -huh. like that you might as well dig it in a little bit and have fun with it and it's this like and I hate that word humiliation because people right. think about that as something really mean and cruel mm -hmm. and un, and not nice but everybody knows sexual teasing is fun like it's mm -hmm. you think about a strip tease cuckolding is a yeah. mental strip tease it really is and and it is a game that you play together that you can learn that is really fun. But some couples don't. They're just like, no, I, I don't want, I don't play that game. Right. Um, <laughs> he just really enjoys her having these other experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think that no matter how you look at cuckolding, hot wifing, whatever, that really this is about elevating a woman's sexuality and mm. and actually just giving her the keys to open the door to explore that and that is the part about cuckolding that we don't hear much about right <laughs> exactly i love this um in your opinion what is a major benefit of cuckolding for the couple yeah so it's definitely very much like I remember my first experience right afterwards he's my cuck said something to me he said I feel like I trust you even more after I had just slept with another guy and uh -huh. I just and I was like th those words really stuck with me there is this kind of enhanced trust that really you're you're pushed into a deeper level of trust that you didn't know existed with this kind of relationship and it has to be all about 
uh, trust. So there's the trust factor, but there's the communication part that has to go with it as well. And I think mm -hmm. you get that with, you know, different types of non-monogamy or kink mm -hmm. relationships that has to be a factor within it. Um, and then the, just this next level love that comes with cuckolding. Being a cuck is a topic that incites both curiosity and controversy and often sparks strong opinions from individuals on either side of the spectrum. Being a cuck is a topic that incites both curiosity and controversy and often sparks strong opinions from individuals on either side of the spectrum. While some may vehemently disagree with the concept, deeming it as unfair or morally questionable, Others find it to be life-changing and empowering. It is important to acknowledge that cuckolding is not for everyone, and they require a unique set of circumstances and individuals who are open-minded, communicative, and emotionally mature. Now, cuckolding is a one-sided, open relationship, as we know, so understanding the reasons behind why some people embrace open relationships is a multifaceted endeavor that necessitates a deeper exploration. One of the primary motivations is the desire for personal growth and self-discovery. In an open relationship, individuals have the opportunity to explore their sexuality, desires, and boundaries without the limitations of traditional monogamous partnerships. This exploration can lead to a profound sense of self-awareness and increased sexual satisfaction and a deeper understanding of one's own needs and wants. Another significant aspect of open relationships is the emphasis on communication and trust. Maintaining a healthy and fulfilling open relationship requires a level of transparency, honesty, and open dialogue that may not be present in traditional relationships. Partners in open relationships engage in regular and outgoing conversations about their needs, boundaries, and expectations. Fostering a sense of mutual respect and understanding, trust becomes a cornerstone of the relationship as partners rely on each other's integrity and commitment to maintain a healthy and consensual dynamic. Please remember that the communication and trust is something that has to be in there. And I said, maintain a healthy and consensual dynamic. This is going to be important later. Right now, Ooh. but the way... The way I really enjoy cuckolding and like everybody has their own kind of way of doing it. But for me, I, it's not so much about him watching me. Um, in fact, I prefer like, maybe not. <laughs> oh, okay. I really like the, um, like, I like the mental game. Like I said, when it comes to cuckolding, I like the, the kind of tease and, yeah. um, this is very much an intellectual kind of, um, kink. And mm. I really like it when he can listen in. <sighs> That's so fun. Cause he's got to kind of imagine what's going on. He can listen, he can hear a oh, bit and you can yeah. say things to him. And, I just really enjoy that part of it. Or there's like um, FaceTiming for a quick Ooh. little bit. Uh, <laughs> or he's nearby. He can hear something going on, but doesn't know exactly what's happening. Or he hears about it when I get home. Oh, that is the best. I see. There's I many love different that. options. Yes, there's so many different <laughs> options. There's so now, many. Now... I bet you weren't expecting that at all, were you? Most of the time when we think about cuck, we think about the guy being in the room. Or sometimes, you know, the guy allowing his girl to go out with another man. But do you ever think about FaceTiming in the middle of it? Do you ever think about letting him just listen in by the door? Do you think that they're telling the stories to these men? And that is a beautiful thing. There's always a humiliation that comes with this relationship. But I want to say this. It's not just pure humiliation as in you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're small, you're all of these things. That is a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. There has to be some kind of personality that comes with it, and there needs to be a relationship. Now, earlier I mentioned consensual communication. That is so important because I believe that a lot of people think that when it comes to being a cuck, it's against their will, and they don't like it. No, they have to like it because if that's not the case, then that is not a cuck relationship. We're going to get so deep into this stuff, guys. It's going to blow your mind. And that's why we continue to educate ourselves on these things. And another thing I want to say right quickly is this is a female-led relationship. Okay? Being a cuck means putting a female on a pedestal. There is a such thing as a cuck queen. And a cuck queen is when the woman does that. The woman allows her man to go sleep with other women. But as you heard... It's not very common that that ever happens. So it's hard to find too many stories on it. Now, some of you guys may say, well, that happens all the time with high value men and all that stuff. But, you know, that's a different story for another day. OK, so anyway, yeah, 
Just wanted to say that, but let's continue on with it. Your advice. Let's start with women. Uh, what is your advice for women who want to introduce cuckolding to to their relationships? Yeah, so that's very uncommon. I mean, I would say definitely nine times out of ten, it's the husband. The guy. Or, yeah, the guy who's bringing it up to her. And um, wow. Okay, I mean, then I want to flip always. that. <laughs> Let's yeah. start with how. What would be your advice for men who are listening and are like, "Oh, damn, I'm interested." How do I even start talking about it? Like, is yeah. there like a protocol that you've seen where it makes it easier? Yeah. Oh, for sure. This is key. This is absolutely key. Ooh, because... What's the key to introducing cuckolding? Okay, so let me let me just say what not to do. So don't yeah. go to your wife and say it be it would be so hot if you fucked other dudes and I could watch. <laughs> just don't. Like, period. <laughs> just just don't. She's gonna be like, wait, wh- what? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, really, it's gonna go. It's, it's probably not gonna go well. But if you can introduce it to her in a way that really puts her first and foremost and say like something to the effect of like I would really love you to have you know other experiences if that's what something that you would desire you know things that Mm -hmm. um, like focus on her desires and her fulfillment and not so much about your own fantasy so don't try to direct this script like a little like mini Spielberg and (laughs) I want you to fuck this guy in this position wearing this with this lighting and he's got to be this size and blah 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 like just don't just don't go there is that what people usually request they like the guys get really 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 hung up on all of this like details details i yeah it has to look this way it's got to be like that and whatever and it really it's going to be it's going to come down to whatever she wants it to be whatever she wants it to look like she might not want you there too bad so sad <laughs> <laughs> i've heard uh people practicing um uh, cock holding in conjunction to race play have you heard of that is it a thing that's this is definitely a thing it- whoa i don't want them spoiling what i have to teach okay I do want to get into that race play thing, but we're going to get into that a little bit later because I want to get deeper into that topic. In in this interview, they don't really cover it well enough. Um, they just kind of talk about it in a different kind of way. Uh, so anyway, moving forward, I want to talk about, she said that men normally come to her about the cuck holding. And I think that's very interesting. Once again, I think we have been taught that women are the ones who want to do all the cuck holding. They're always saying, hey, I want to sleep with another guy. And it's really the men who start to do that. Now, why do men want their woman sleeping with another man? Now, this leads to a whole concept of looking at the adult industry a lot and being too open to yourself sexually may make you want to start fantasizing about another guy doing something with your wife because you may believe you're not big enough. You may not believe you're enough for her at all. Or you just have this fantasy of thinking, man, it would be nice to see her in this position with this guy and I just watch as if you're watching a what as if you're watching an adult industry film once again you got to be careful when you step into that whole world because this starts to mess up your mind and I think that's why more men tend to go towards this but we're going to continue we got a lot more to talk about like what if the woman who's listening to this podcast right now is like I'm interested how do you think she should bring it up is it just the same way as the man would yeah, I don't know. Like this would be difficult because yeah, I can. The see. one-sided open part is it really appeals to a certain kind of guy where he's kind of wired to really enjoy that. Now that's not to say that there aren't a lot of guys who are wired that way because clearly there are. <laughs> oh yeah, the, <laughs> the more you know, shows. right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The more I talk guys. to people and the more I'm exposed to different people. The more I, I I learn that so many people are into it, and yeah. some of these people are like my dentist. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so, I'm like, wow, it's so interesting. Absolutely, and and so there's a lot of guys who are 
who would be probably like, yeah, that that sounds kind of hot. Like, we, maybe, we yeah. Like, yeah. okay, <laughs> like, let's say the sin- scenario is she's interested. She wants to try once at least, like, to see what's up. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's like a, a soft maybe. So like a potential. Mm-hmm. What What do you think she should like say? Just like, hey, um, obviously not like I want to get fucked by another guy. <laughs> Um, well, you could like, I guess, watch some stuff together. Or I would together. say amateur, amateur, go amateur. amateur. Please don't watch yeah. the other stuff. Because <laughs> then it'll be too perfect because it's it's fake. Well, a lot of it is heavily on the um, uh, femdom, mm. extreme humiliation, degradation mm. side. That's just a very easy script to portray mm-hmm. on video. Mm. And so that's what they go to a lot in cuckolding porn. Um, but it's not the norm in my right. experience but mm. um but amateur stuff w- is great because then they can get an idea of what this is really like and so they can watch something that like that together or just dirty talk in the bedroom oh my gosh you can do a lot with this cuckolding stuff you can do yeah. a lot now she mentioned about some guys being wired that way i would say that there are less guys wired that way than they're saying Society has seen the sexual liberation of women, and that tends to show that women want to have options and let them always be open and have multiple guys fawning over them to feel validation. Now, it may not be in the form of cuckolding, but it may be in the form of, you know, Instagram, stuff like that, being liked on a picture, wearing certain clothes so they are seen. Now, this may stem from insecurities or this may stem from something that's hardwired, as some people believe that some people are going to be into cuckolding and they're always going to be that way. They're always going to need multiple relationships. That's how they are. And some people believe that it is a phase and that eventually you will no longer need multiple relationships. You will be happy with just you and your spouse. I want to take a step back when she said there's a lot of guys and maybe more than you know that want to be cucks. I really looked into this and I went to go search around to see if a lot of men talked about this or if a lot of men were into this. And what I found is that most men are not into this. Are there some men who want to be cucks? Yes. But when they say a lot of men, that's anecdotal. They work in this industry. They seek out those kind of people and those kind of conversations. But what I found is that a lot of men do not want to go this route. They are perfectly fine with having a girlfriend or wife just to themselves. Now we're going to get into a creator called Beauty Ray. And she's going to talk a little bit about the beef with cuckolding and her issues with it and why she feels like a lot of people have issues with it. Let's get into it. Let's talk about cuckolding. So first things first, um, people have been always fascinated by kind of like dangerous um fantasies or something that is not really is a little bit out of the ordinary something that is not so moral in a way and i consider cuckolding something that is really um morally wrong you know what i mean so because it is basically cheating in some type of way right and Cheating has been really, like, looked bad upon by everybody. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, she cheated on me. He cheated on me. Oh my god, we're getting divorced. We're breaking up. This is so bad. Cheating is happening all the time. But what if, of course, there is an exception, which is that you welcome cheating. You want to be cheated on. It excites you. So this is what cuckolding basically is. It's turning all this kind of like a wrong thing to do into something that is welcomed, something that is supported and something that is, you know, exciting. I apologize if she sounds weird, but that's because I had to remove the wind and the water sounds behind her so you could actually hear her voice. And when I say that I removed it, I actually mean I just clicked the button and the software did it and I didn't do anything. Life is beautiful, fellas. It is beautiful. Now, let's get back to what she just said. Cheating. Talking about cheating. I think that's an interesting point because some people may say that being in a cuckold relationship is not cheating because they're consenting to it. But I think she makes a great point by saying it is cheating. It is absolutely cheating. But some people are okay with the cheating. That's why they want to be a cuck. That's why they enjoy it because they love the fact that they're being cheated on. They love the fact that they may be humiliated. They love the fact that their woman is being pleasured by another man that's not them. They embrace the cheating. And I would say that most people believe that being in a cuckold relationship is cheating. 
But is it a bad thing? And that's what really matters is what does it mean to you? Once again, I'm going to say the word I said earlier. Consensual communication is what it comes down to. And she talks about the morality of it. Now, that's something we'll get into a little bit more later. But I'll just say this. When it comes to the morality of cuckolding, you're not going to find too many individuals that find it moral. A lot of people don't realize that they actually do want to see their girl, their wife being with another man. Because what if another man can unlock something in her that he cannot? You know, like what if another person can get her going better than you can? And wouldn't you want to see that? You know, and I have actually been talking with some regular guys like, you know, super basic, like nothing extra, right? Like not a beta, not, you know, not anything like that, that are in a relationship where their um, intimate life is not really good, right? And they say they wish they their woman actually um, had a better um, intimate life, even if it's not with them, you know? They told me that they want their woman to enjoy And if it's not with them, they don't actually mind, right? And I think this is really, you know, it it talks about something, right? Like, I believe that all men want women to experience pleasure, want women to experience, um, to be happy, right? The common argument against this is that a relationship is not about giving your partner the world, so to speak. That being in a relationship shouldn't make a person feel less than because they cannot satisfy you sexually, or in some cases, the men just simply believe they can't satisfy sexually. However, if the woman voices that they are not being sexually satisfied, that can be resolved in other ways such as extenders, toys, and other things that can help. If it has to be a human being that has to satisfy her, then there may be more reasoning behind that. Now, some people may say in the cuckolding community that having a person there allows for more communication and it puts in there a different level of trust than simply using a toy. Because sometimes a woman may want to feel something real, something that's really theirs. They want to feel the heat. They want to feel the presence. It's more than just about the sexual part of all of it. So that is something you may look into if a woman was to bring this up to you as a man. I want to say this about this creator. This is not a creator who talks mainly just about cuckolding this individual is into making men sissies and making men betas and stuff like that so this woman is more of a femdom than a cuckoldress so please if you were to watch her content please go in it with that mindset she is much more female-led femdom than she is a cuckoldress now we're about to listen to a deep discussion from dr david lay he is the author of a book called insatiable wives which is a cuckolding book about how men in power had all these wives who were going out and sleeping with other men and the husbands were fine with it. He also wrote a book on pornography. So you're going to hear a little bit about that as well and how it kind of ties into cuckolding. Let's get into it. It, You know, it's funny. I mean, uh, you just helped me make this interesting connection because um, we see that shame spiral um, in a lot of modern research around people that struggle with pornography. And mm-hmm. we, we, we actually, we, we call it moral incongruence. And what we find is that the um, people who identify as addicted to pornography are very likely to have grown up religious and to have a whole lot of shame about their sexual desires. And they, they engage in the behaviors, they watch the kind of porn But then they feel guilty and ashamed about it and they hate themselves. And then oftentimes the only way to make that feeling go away is to then watch the pornography again um, because when they're watching the pornography, they feel better. um, But then again, they hate themselves afterwards. And so it's that shame, it's that same shame spiral. Say that 20 times fast. (laughs) The same shame spiral um, playing out um, in a lot of, in a lot of men that, you know, desire cuckolding, but may, but worry that it makes them less of a man to to want it. Um, And it's so fascinating. It really only is around sexuality and sexuality conflict that we see that spiral playing out so clearly. Some people believe that porn plays a role when it comes to cuckolding. The interview earlier mentioned that some people should watch amateur porn in order to understand being a cuck. The issue that may come up is that the only emotion that seems genuine in porn seems to be pain. 
by other standards and by what most people say, a lot of pornography seems to be fake. It's all an act for the camera. And this is hard to avoid. I have live streamed in front of a camera for a long time, and I've been in front of a camera plenty of times here on social media. And I gotta say, being yourself completely on camera is kind of hard to do, so we can see it in pornography as well. And there is a possibility that if somebody never viewed porn, or at least didn't view porn constantly, there's a good chance they would never want to become a cuck. Because the only place you ever see a man having sex with another woman is typically in pornography. Unless you're going to obviously brothels or stuff like that. But most people around here, at least in America, we don't do that. So, or at least I don't know of any. I mean, I'm sure there's some underground stuff. I know, I know. But as far as I know, I've never seen one. I've never heard anybody going to one. So unless you're doing that, the good chance of you ever seeing anybody have sex with each other is either at a swinger party or in pornography. Uh, one of the things I've, I've paid attention to is when cuckold couples are exposed, who suffers? And oh. overwhelmingly, it's the it's the wife. Um, you know, when we when we look at you know now, um, uh, Jerry Falwell Jr. is one of the rare exceptions that he suffered. But, you know, his wife, Becky, is the one who was really called a slut and um, and Falwell was made fun of. But but she's the one who I think was just really attacked. Um, there have been a number of, you know, um, couples that were doing OnlyFans and uh, online and making amateur porn and, uh, you know, cuck and cuckolding was a big part of it. And then the, it gets exposed, you know, and the wife turns out to be a teacher or the wife, you know, um, uh, turns out to be, you know, prominent in some way or whatever. And she gets destroyed. Um, there's, there, there's one, uh, couple that I interviewed, um, from my, I want to say, uh, the South, um, the woman was known as a uh, jinxie pie and she was, a she was a porn performer and was making cuckold porn with her husband and, um, they got exposed and, uh, the family, um, horrifically rejected them and, uh, he ended up dying by suicide oh. and because apparently the Jinxie pie, the wife had had sex at some point with an underage guy, like 16 or 17 year old kid. Um, she ended up as a registered sex offender. Oh, wow. And, um, so, 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 so the, the thing that I uh, unfortunately do sometimes have to say is that, you know, it is still the case that women engaged in cuckolding, if it is exposed, are more likely to be the ones that suffer. Now, I have to be fair and give a little bit of pushback on that last part. As we've seen, at least in social media, when this happened to Destiny, he was the one who suffered. When it happened to Sneeko, he was the one to suffer. We saw this happen with Adam 22. He was the one who got made fun of. He was the one who was embarrassed. In those three instances, I've never seen the woman really get called out. If anything, she's held to a higher esteem and the guy is just looked at as weak. So I don't know where they're necessarily seeing that. Now, I know they may study politicians and all that, but even in the political world, I have never seen that. But it could possibly be true. But I did want to give a little pushback because based off the social media we see, that is not always what's going on. Now, to touch base on the secrecy part of being a cuckold, there is a feeling of embarrassment of getting caught doing it. And obviously, when people fall into their fantasies, they only participate in that kind of stuff in the dark. And that's what makes it exciting. And that's why some people won't go out there and tell everybody they're doing cuckold because maybe they want to get caught. Like I said, like the girl said earlier, some people may want to be cheated on. That's the whole point. It's everything that comes together. And there's also one more element that falls into all of this. A lot of people get tired of fighting the urge. And I don't think that's talked about enough. But as I watched through all these videos and did all this research, I noticed that a lot of people say it's a lot easier to let go. It's a lot easier to just stop fighting the urge. It's a lot easier just to be who you are. And I think that what a lot of people do is they contributed this to the whole free love thing. Be with whoever you want to be with. Do whatever you want to do. As long as you're not hurting anybody, 
just explore your sexuality, explore yourself, and explore all of these things. Now, when it comes to cuckolding, masculinity does play a role in this. Does it make you more masculine to be a cuck, or does it make you less masculine? Or does the masculinity even matter at all? Yeah, the Jerry Falwells, the, <laughs> yeah. the you know, the, 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 the folks that are embracing, you know, trad culture and traditional masculinity. Um, but that's the funny thing is that the more the more conservatives hold up, you know, traditional masculinity as this hallmark of ideal. Um, and they make fun of men who are not masculine enough, the more exciting they make being a cuckold uh, to be because the taboo paradoxically increases it. And it's not by accident that, you know, people in Russia, people in Italy, people in South America are increasingly embracing cuckolding because those are areas where, you know, you have to be a real man. And um, part of being a real man is your wife or your girl would never cheat on you. She She's satisfied by only you. And and then there are guys that start fantasizing about, wow, what if I didn't have to be in charge? What if, what if I just got to sit back and watch? What if I got to be weak and survive it? Yeah. And so it's not by accident that cuckolding is more popular amongst conservative and con Republicans. Um, you know, uh, uh, Justin Miller found that in his research on sexual fantasy. Hey, this is editing Trey right now. I just realized that I'm about to go on a pretty long uh, soliloquy of <laughs> masculinity. So just bear with me. It's a little bit longer than I normally talk, but for some reason I felt like I had to get this off my chest. So sit back, enjoy, and then we'll be back in the regular format. Thank you. Goodbye. Shameless plug here, but if you remember, I spoke a little bit about masculinity in my adult baby diaper lover video. You should go check that out and kind of see how that plays a different role. But I had mentioned how some men who are in prominent positions tend to want to go towards that life sometimes because the drive for masculinity is pushing more men to want to partake in a submission to women. There is a part of some men that feel better letting women have power over them. Masculinity to some men seems to mean responsibilities and no emotion. In the tapestry of human emotions, there lies an intricate dance of genders where men and women navigate their roles and desires. Within this delicate balance, there is a growing recognition that men may find liberation in allowing women to lead them. It is not a matter of dominance or submission, but rather a shift in perspective that can unlock new possibilities for both partners. When men surrender the weight of decision making and control to women, they open themselves up to a life of mental freedom. That is not to say that women are expected to carry all the burdens. Rather, it is about creating a shared space where both partners can thrive. In such a partnership, men can let go of societal pressures that can often define their masculinity and embrace a more authentic and fulfilling way of life. Women with their natural intuition and emotional intelligence can provide men with a unique perspective that helps them navigate the complexities of modern life. They can offer a sounding board for men's thoughts and feelings, helping them to process their emotions and gain clarity. By allowing women to lead, men can tap into a source of wisdom and support that is often overlooked in traditional gender worlds. Moreover, when women take on leadership roles, they challenge societal norms and pave the way for greater gender equality. This creates a ripple effect in society, inspiring other women to step into leadership positions and challenging the status quo. By embracing female leadership, men can contribute to a more inclusive and just world. Now, I know I've said a whole lot, but I did want to just touch on that part of the masculinity and why some men may want to go into this whole cocoa thing. It is important to note that this shift in gender dynamics does not diminish the role of men in relationships. Rather, it allows both partners to contribute their unique strengths and perspectives to create a harmonious and fulfilling partnership. When men and women work together as equals, they can achieve a level of intimacy and connection that is beyond traditional gender roles. In conclusion, men who embrace female leadership can unlock a life of mental freedom and contribute to a more equitable society. By surrendering control and allowing women to lead, they can tap into a source of wisdom and support that is often overlooked. Trey, what does all this have to do with being a cuck? Well, when you're in a relationship like this, it is female-led. That means she's making the decision to pick the bull. And the bull in this situation is the man that she would be sleeping with, right? But it's not just that, guys. I think 
what a lot of people also miss. When you're in a cuck relationship, you don't just go pick a guy and have sex with him. That is not all it is. It is building a relationship with them. It is about going out to dinner with them. It's about getting to know them. That is obviously female led and it's completely only open on the female side. So you've got to understand that means she's taking a bigger leadership role in y'all's entire relationship because not only is she getting her emotional needs fed by meeting with this man, she's going to get her sexual needs met with this man. And you're just going to have to allow that. What she chooses to do is all on her. Whether she lets you watch, whether she lets you listen, or whether she even tells you about the experience at all, is all in her control. So you tell me, <laughs> what does that do to one's masculinity? That means he has to allow her to be in a leadership role. Now, I do understand that there are gender roles, and I just laid out everything already, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But just know that there is just more to it than simply, oh, go have sex with this guy. It's just more to it. Now, this begs the question. Should we normalize infidelity? Infidelity does happen, and maybe we should just accept it. And unless you have a religious reasoning to be committed to another person, then it should be perfectly fine. Would we all be better allowing our partners to explore their sexuality every now and then and be fully committed to each other? But there is one problem with all of this. What happens to the children? If some man gets your wife pregnant because y'all were just doing this sexual fantasy, what then does this make of the children and how does it affect them knowing that they were not part of a necessarily traditional relationship they were born out of a sexual fantasy it is such a wild cuckold fantasy i have had so many guys who really fantasize about this idea of having to raise somebody else's kid and like how humiliating that is and like I, 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 that especially if it's like a biracial children, a child or something like that, like this is such a, a fantasy that a lot of guys have within this whole cuckold thing. Yeah. So I, I, I will, I will confess that that's one of the things that I still struggle with. And, and, you know, and I'm a, I'm a positive and affirmative um, person um, and clinician around these issues. Um, I think, I, I think it's fine for guys to fantasize about that. However, um, I worry about the mental health and emotional health of kids that could result from that um, because basically they're non-consensually being made part of this sex fantasy. Yeah, I agree 100%. I have thought about it a lot over the years because I've had so many guys talk to me about that fantasy. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's really hot and everything like that. And it's fun to talk about and fantasize about and bedroom talk and stuff like that. But Oh my God, like, how would you even deal with that? How, like, you're, this is a child, like, this, this child's gonna grow up. How would you protect them from the trauma of knowing about that? And it's that's just right. so unfair for the child. I'm like, nah, let's just right. not go there. Like, that seems like a pretty selfish thing to do to bring a child into the world in that way. Yeah. If, but, and I've well, had a lot of people upset with me because I feel like that, but I'm just right. like, no. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things, again, you know, writing that book changed my life. Um, it changed my career um, in, in so many ways. And since then, you know, I've become board certified as a sex therapist and, and, and I'm uh, recognized kind of at the highest level now as being able to train sex therapy. And one of the things I've learned since is that we – we, we can allow people to be as kinky as they want to be, but we, we need to help them understand what healthy sexuality is. Healthy sexuality used to be penis and vagina sex, not penis and anus or mouth. Penis, um, that sex within marriage was healthy, but sex outside marriage was not healthy. That heterosex was healthy and homosex was unhealthy. We used to judge healthy sexuality by what it was. Um, it was an act-based model of sexual health. And this is something I want to chime in on just right quickly. Cuck holding can have a problem because it does ask the question, what makes it healthy? What then would make it consensual? At any point, could consent be revoked? For example, could the man at any point say, you know what, I'm actually not comfortable with this. 
at all. Can we get out of this? Now, what does that mean? Are you now saying that you're selfish and you believe that you can sexually satisfy your wife? But we had already said in the beginning that the whole purpose of this was because you couldn't sexually satisfy your wife. Or was this just a sexual fantasy and now you no longer want to be a part of it? But you made her a part of it. Now she is a part of this whole sexual fantasy you got going on. So can you revoke it from her if she was enjoying it? See, this is where the waters may get a little bit muddied. And that's why I had talked about continual consensual communication. Because this is normally what people fall into. And this is why some cuckolding relationships don't last. Because eventually somebody, somebody's uncomfortable with it. And it's hard to get past that. So would it be better to not ever get into a cocoa relationship and try other methods or are you already willing to risk the relationship knowing that this can go south? Now, obviously, any relationship can go south at any moment. I'm simply saying I think this just adds to the pressure of always trying to be like, well, I can't let it go because we're already here. Now we're going to take a moment to look into some unhealthy things that can happen when being a cuck and how to go into it and how not to go into it. And don't think that I missed that race play comment. We're going to get into that. I promise. So, you know, I've seen there, there was a case in Taiwan, I think about two years ago of these Asian men who met on a discussion group about cuckolding and they all wanted to be cuckolded by their wives. And these three guys, I think three or four they conspired together and they drugged their wives and then the other men came over and had sex with the wife. Yeah. Well, that's exploitive and that's mm -hmm. not consensual and that's not honest and that's not mutual. It's not the cuckolding that's unhealthy. It's the sexual assault, right? Yeah. It's the lack of consent. And so – you know, I see guys who want to trick their wives into cheating, in, into cuckolding them. And I say, no, 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 dude, the fantasy is okay, but it's not honest and it's not consensual. Now it's unhealthy. Yeah. Now, if you can find a way to engage in the behavior honestly and consensually, then it's healthy. Yeah, I've had that happen so many times too, where I've had guys that reach out to me and they're like, oh my God, I know my wife would really love this. If only she would just try it. I'm going to uh, arrange for this guy to show up at this time and hit on her. And, and the, it, they're like scheming up all of this mm -hmm. scenario to trick their wife into this. And I'm like, you need to stop. And there's guys out there online who are giving tips to each other yeah. to do this. Yeah. And I'm like, you need to stop. Just stop. Okay, we're now going to go into a cuckoldress who also does this in real life. This is Dating Kinky, or you can call her Heather, whichever, doesn't matter. But we're going to go ahead and get into an example of how not to approach this whole cuckolding fantasy that you may have. And we talked yesterday a bit about um, how cuckold wannabes often uh, get it wrong when they approach their partners about cuckolding or approach women online about cuckolding, which actually, interestingly enough, brings me up to an experience I just had this morning related to cuckolding as well. So, I get this message on uh, FetLife that says, I too have some teaching experience, but, but was trained and worked as a broadcast journalist and other jobs related. I've been fantasizing about becoming a cuckold for years. And before I even knew the word, I've had an interesting life world traveled and have crossed the line into taboo wherever appropriate for my values, not many exceptions and was available not that often. Since you are experienced in this area, interesting, adorable, and a slut, I would love it if you broke me in. I am a very good role player and not shy, so I would be easy to train for your pleasure. After all, you are the cuckold queen of North Carolina. I am just down the road in the mountains, and you are welcome to stay at my place anytime. So, <laughs> I wrote back and said, while I'm flattered by the offer, I'm not available to break anyone in, nor am I interested. I have a cuckold submissive partner and I only want or need one. 
I would suggest approaching anyone else that you might have an interest in developing a relationship with as a human rather than someone who can dispense your fantasies. Say hello, introduce yourself, note something that you might have in common that is not kink or sexual and offer a connection in a friendly way because this came across as actually pretty gross and 100% self-serving and would not have attracted me even were I single and looking. Best of luck to you. Now, whether you agree with kinks or don't agree with kinks, we can all agree that there is still a way you approach people. Just because somebody's into them doesn't mean that they're ready to get in bed immediately. There is a belief that people who are into kinks are always open to certain encounters and always ready to get in bed as soon as possible. We see this dynamic when it comes to the adult industries, the ladies of the night, or these OnlyFans models. If you were to walk up to an OnlyFans model and call them out of their name and said, hey, would you take off your clothes right now? Uh, most of them would say that's pretty disrespectful. If you were to ask them to go to bed with you, that would be seen as disrespectful. That's what I'm saying. It's just like when people hear about these kinks or they say, oh, you know what? She's in the cuckolding or she's in the female domination or whatever. They think they can just walk up to him and say, hey, I'll be your sad little guy if you let me. No, that is not how you go up to people. And that's not how you respect people. Regardless if you agree with it or not, there is still a way you approach people as human beings. I don't ever want somebody to come up to me and meet me and say, hi, I'm so and so. I have a tiny little dicklet and I'll put it at your service as you're cuckold. Like, that's a no. That's that's a big no. That's not going to happen, right? It's different if you're in a relationship, right? Because then you have the opportunity to create these types of languages together, as Ramon says, with communication and consent. And this is the part that I think, like, I really want to get across more than anything out of these, you know, five days that I'm discussing cuck week, discussing for cuck week is it's not when you're starting out, when you're looking for this relationship, you don't have the framework in your mind for what this is like stepping into this relationship what you understand about cuckolding and what there actually is are radically different things um dennis says cuckolding has made us very intimate than ever humiliation part of the game yeah so humiliation can be a part of cuckolding but it is not the first part of cuckolding like you don't just like step up to somebody and say hi i'm so and so please humiliate me and i'll be your cuckold i know a bunch of y'all like what i tried to tell you tried to tell you this whole humiliation thing about it is something that you have probably seen when you log on to www.hub.com. Okay, that's probably what you think about when you think about cucks. You think about female domination. That's why I'm here to educate. And that's why I had to educate myself. Because it's important that we understand what we're talking about when it comes to these things. There's a misconception that hot wives are looking to humiliate anyone who will take it. And of course, there are outliers, but this community seems to uphold the relationship part of it. You cannot simply have the spicy side without first forming a relationship and developing the kink because at the end of the day, hot wives want to be humanized and not simply seen as another notch in the belt in somebody's fantasy. We see this with women in other areas too. Are there some women who want to have three guys in one night are there some women who said they've had 50 guys in one night of course there are but we know most women aren't looking for one night stands they do want to be in a relationship even though we have the whole hookup culture and that may skew a lot of things i promise you if you walk up to some random girl and say hey do you want to do this or do that even if you're a good looking man most of those women are more than likely going to say no unless you're in a certain city or a certain culture but in most places, that is just not the norm. Now, there's something I haven't mentioned that was mentioned earlier, but I didn't show it. Um, this whole concept of a BBC and race play and all these having an interracial baby and all that kind of stuff. I have to address that. 
I have to. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that. Let's talk about the BBC part of cuckolding. The surprise was um, something that Siren found. <laughs> well, my husband found for me that <laughs> anybody who has followed me or seen me will understand that I tend to go for this for just like I'm gonna take big, off my jacket. Big black ox. <laughs> BBC. We'll 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 make sure there's quick quick things that can be done. I almost kind um, of like I almost like to ask everybody that like we film with I'm like, hey, are you cool with me sub objectifying you and categorizing you like that? Or do you want to just be a person who's well endowed? He, he, he was cool with in. it. Yeah, I know. He, he kept saying it. I just always wonder, you know, I'm like, no, no, do you I like know. this or not? I tend to like, yeah, I know I usually have conversations, yeah. but I feel like if you've seen my stuff at all, you kind of understand yeah. what you're getting yourself into and will tell me if there's an issue otherwise. Right. So my husband's been sending me all of these, you know, prospective people and I just happened to, while we were getting errands done yesterday, text this one. He happened to be in the vicinity and... I convinced him to just drop <laughs> what he was doing and come see us. Yep. So he, he drove, went out of his way, um, and and made it happen. Yeah. Which for somebody who's a relatively newer performer, getting thrown in the ring with Us two. Us two who are high <laughs> energy, you know, know what we want, are gonna be very direct about everything. It was it was very fun but we got to share yeah. we got to share a bbc together <laughs> yeah first time doing that for yes. sure yes shout out to the reddit user who put this up they explained it way better than i could have i'm gonna try to read this verbatim but you know some people mess up in their sentences so just bear with me in order for a bbc to be more compelling than a fetish than the idea of a woman just having sex with a hung dude in general there must be a racist undercurrent this is highly sensitive and therefore almost never spoken but it may include just like there's a proliferation of step-sibling porn, which is compelling because it violates a culture of prohibition, so the BBC fetish derives strength from being a violation of a perceived prohibition of interracial relations. If we're not being racist, then there's no reason to not have sex with a dude just on the basis that he's black. Only if we're being racist, then there is a reason not to. And then the BBC fetish is compelling because we're violating this. For many men, enjoyment from sex is amplified by a perception that the female is really enjoying it on an animalistic level. The man is not turned on by the woman being emotional and romantic. He's turned on by her letting go, allowing herself to become a savage and rough and carnal. The way the BBC fetish relates to this is by the racist assumption that the woman couldn't possibly be romantically interested in the black partner. The idea of her falling in love is off the cards on the basis of race from the get-go. Correctly or not, her man trusts that her enjoyment is more fully carnal and animalistic than with a white dude. This is both a greater turn on for him as well as it increases his sense of emotional safety. For dudes who are into humiliation, the humiliation is amplified because his wife is being dominated not only by a dude who is taller, more buff, and better hung, but a dude from a lesser race. The cuckold gets off to feeling inferior, and what's more inferior than being dominated by a savage? Finally, the BBC almost might get off on taking the woman of a socially superior man, or even dominating the man in a reversal of master-slave dynamic. This is not to say that the individual who is a part of this is not enjoying himself with these women. I'm simply saying, and I'm simply trying to get across that, yes, sometimes it can come off in a racist way, and I'm not the one who normally pulls that card, but if you just think about it, if a woman wouldn't get with somebody because of their race, they wouldn't romantically get involved with them, then why would they make them into a fetish? There is one thing to have a preference. That is normal. People have a re preference when it comes to their race. Most people marry within their races. But just imagine somebody saying, oh, I could have sex with you and I want you to just ravage me. I want you to be like an animal, but I could never marry you or be romantically involved with you. That just feels weird. Now, I'm not going after these two women because they said it. They said that they try to bring up the issue and they also, they do take these people out. They try to get to know them. They don't just get into a relationship and do all this. They try to actually be emotionally involved with these men. So I'm not killing these two women on that. I'm simply saying that sometimes it can come across that just saying somebody the BBC or just saying somebody the snow bunny or just saying she's this, it could come off a way of just, man, they are only seen because of their race. They're not seen as anything else. 
it's the one thing you can be really animalistic with because he's the BBC he's going to be portrayed as an animal. Let's be honest, even in the adult industry world, we see this a lot. Most of the time when you see interracial things, what does it normally say? BBC does this to this white girl, right? So just like we talked about earlier, when you're doing this cuck stuff and you're doing these fetishes and kink, sometimes you might need to take a step back and ask yourself, am I treating this person in a healthy way? Am I treating them like a human? Or am I simply just objectifying them because I have a fantasy that I need to fulfill? So, you think you're ready to be a cuck? You think you're ready to get into this lifestyle? Well, before you do that, let me go ahead and prepare you for what could happen if you decide to just jump right on into this. I want to introduce Mr. Josh Hudson. Like, a lot of these guys that were into cuck ones I worked with, like, after they watched the porn or after a couple did experiment with role plays of like them acting like a different guy when they were having sex with their partner. They felt mm -hmm. horrible after mm -hmm. I had one man, for example. Okay. He wanted the role play with his girlfriend about this. And he said, um, you know, he basically the role play was that like he would leave right mm -hmm. out of town for a weekend and some uh, mechanic would come over to fix her sink or something. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Oh, I have a boyfriend. And she was saying his name, right? Like my boyfriend, did, my, my boyfriend, Derek or whatever. He's not, he's not home right now. And then she basically gave in. And what happened? I swear to God, he said, he said that when, it, when they were going into it, he was shaking uh -huh. like this. And he, uh, he was saying it was cold and it wasn't cold at all. And his body was having a traumatic response. Mm. And so for him personally, like exploring down this route, even with a woman he felt safe with, his girlfriend, like the thought of her cheating on him with another man, gave him a traumatic response. Mm -hmm. So it, you can try it out. Like to each <laughs> their own. But all I'm saying is like, ask yourself how you feel after it's done or you explore mm -hmm. that idea. Like if it feels, if you feel good about it, great. But if you all of a sudden start to think that you're, you know, now she's going to go do it with other people behind your back. Mm-hmm. It's probably not a good idea to, you know, you might want to look inward and try to heal where that's coming from. Mm. Um, now, have you heard of this concept where it's not like traditional, but it's like watching your partner have sex with someone else while like you direct them? Now, he's going to talk about control and we'll get into that. But you hear what he said? What we see here is that simply jumping into things may cause a negative response. There needs to be a slow walk into this lifestyle. Questions that need to be asked. Is it simply because our intimate life is boring? What is boring about it? Can we switch things up? Does it have to be related to our spicy side? Now, he's going to say all of this way better than I just said it. But I wanted to go ahead and get your mind ready for the information that he's about to give. By the way, be careful. Be careful how that adult industry will mess up your brain, okay? I mentioned that earlier when she talked about looking at amateur porn. Do what you're going to do, okay? But I'm simply just trying to give the facts of the adult industry world is not reality. They don't make money off of reality. They make money off of your fantasies. The more you look, the more you indulge, the more you're going to wire yourself to be ready for those fantasies. So just because you see cucking in pornography does not mean that's how it's going to go in the real world. Imagine you're looking at the mountains and it's snowing and it's beautiful and it's wonderful, but you're looking at it through a picture. You're looking at it through a video on YouTube. It is much different than standing in sub-zero weather looking at those same mountains. When you're actually in the situation, it is much different than when you're watching a video of it being done. Just remember that. So there's like research that shows there's sexual humps, like humps of sexual desire for each other because it just becomes boring. Um mm. There's five year hum and 10 year hum mm -hmm. that research found like people tend to struggle um, yeah, in terms of sure. passion for each other. Yeah. Then my next question would be, <clears throat> let's say if the couple's like, well, we've been hearing about coupling, we've seen maybe a video, like a, a porn video, and we feel like we want to try. What are other practices that people can attempt instead of exploring coupling if you feel like coupling comes from an unhealthy place? Esther Perel talks about this a lot, right? With couples. The pulling and pushing and the energy. Yeah. And also that. like the sense of like, okay, you have to just ask yourself like, what emotional need is being met through that, that act, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, maybe novelty. Let's just say it's novelty just for the case mm -hmm. of this argument. If it's novelty, that's some need getting met. Is like, can you have novelty in a different domain or it can still be in the sexual domain if you want, but can you introduce novelty in another way, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't involve another partner. 
Mm-hmm. Again, I'm always about like, you know, doing whatever you feel is best for you guys. But uh-huh. as a couple, anyone listening, but at the same time, you know, ask what need is being met and then ask yourself if you can get that need met in a more healthy way, right? Mm-hmm. As an example, like you can kind of <laughs> get out of your mind a lot by drinking a bunch of alcohol uh-huh. or you can meditate. Both uh-huh. get you out of your mind, but one has really detrimental effects, right? And right, another one is more positive for you. So it's like when it comes to this need being met, can you get it met in a more healthy way? Um, interesting. Okay, now, uh, what would be like? Let's say, what would you recommend specifically if someone was like, okay, like I want novelty. Um, let's say, what are like three things that you would say? Okay, try these three things first. Yeah. Um, go somewhere else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> travel. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So like let's say they they travel and they're like, ah, oh, I just we still have this edge of like we just we're not super. The spark isn't there. What's mm-hmm. next? There is a plethora of role plays you can do, right? Mm-hmm. That don't involve other people, mm-hmm. right? I mean, there's there's sex toys you can introduce, and mm-hmm. I mean, if, they, if they've done all of that, again, mm-hmm. like by all means, kind of tease the idea up a little bit like try the uh-huh. role like that my that my client did where he started to have the trauma response like try it out there like play it out where it's like you're a different person she's a di- or she's a different person how does that feel if it mm-hmm. feels good for the both of you you guys kind of check in afterwards it's like all right let's let's just now hang out with someone else and we don't have to take it all the way to sex we can just talk about it with someone else then uh-huh. kind of check in with each other it's like you don't have to just jump into the deep end all, all right yeah. away right because you might sink <laughs> and then the relationship's gonna fall and then there's a look, I've, I've had couples <laughs> who've done this I've in, right in, in session and like they're breaking up like marriages because uh-huh. they introduced a third person uh-huh. right and then an emotional relationship was created with that third person even though they said they had boundaries around it because they just jumped in right they didn't mm. explore it slowly mm. and so i'm saying if you're going to do it go for it but just take it one step at a time like because mm. it can jeopardize the whole entire relationship where mm. if a betrayal happens that can cause damage on the whole relationship and then it's, mm-hmm. it's all gone because you wanted to explore this ephemeral need one of these days, I'm going to make a deep dive on polyamory, but I will tell you this. The research I have done into those kind of things, and obviously this video here with the cuck thing, what he said makes so much sense. Because a lot of the times, the reason these poly relationships don't work or these open relationships don't work is because somebody emotionally falls for the third person or the third person gets kicked out altogether. And so you have to be careful just hopping into this. It can't just be a sexual thing. There's a lot more that comes with being in an open relationship or letting your wife do something with another man. And you you have to be so careful because if it's just a fantasy that you want to just live out for a quick second, you may be putting yourself in a crazy lifestyle. You let your wife do this one time and it messes up y'all's entire relationship and it ends just because you wanted to fulfill yourself sexually. So a lot of these people can do it. Some people love it. Some people want it. But I'm just going to say, and I said a lot of people, some people, I meant to say some people, not everybody can do this. Okay. So if you want to hop into this thing, please take everything that I said and try to apply it to your own life. Now there's one question I do have to answer. To be fair, pretty much anyone who watches porn kind of is a cuck because you're what you're finding someone to that you fancy and watching them get laid by someone else. So I guess in the end, Most of us are, and there's no shame in it, right? No, watching porn does not make you a cuck. Because in order for you to be a cuck, by definition, you have to be in a relationship with the woman. In most cases, most people would say a wife. That's why you have the term hot wife, right? That comes from the whole cuckoldress thing, but a hot wife is pretty much the same thing. That's why the Dr. David guy we talked about earlier, he wrote a book called Insatiable Wives, which is about being a cuck. So you have to be in a relationship with the woman in order for you to be a cuck. If you're watching some woman who is not your wife, who is not your girlfriend, you are not being a cuck. You are simply watching two people have sex and then getting off to it. Just like, well, not just like, but if you went to the movie theater and you saw a sex scene, does that make you a cuck? No, you intentionally went and watched the movie and there was a sex scene. Even if somebody told you there was a sex scene, you probably still watched the sex scene, but that doesn't make you a cuck. It simply means you watched the sex scene, okay? But if you're going to the hub.com, you're doing it to get your rocks off. And obviously, you know, look into that because you don't need to be constantly going there for that. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about being a cuck. 
and learning what you need to do if you want to go into this lifestyle do your research and slowly move into it don't just let it be a quick thing off the top of your noggin because you just watched the video or you're just having a fantasy or you're just horny don't do that make sure that you look into what you're doing do it in a healthy way and make sure make sure that if at any point you are no longer enjoying it please bring this up to your person or your partner and let them know this okay i hope you guys have a great day much love peace <laughs> i said peace i meant to say goodbye